Hi, baby. We went over to get Fetty because Fetty's in pretty significant respiratory distress, having a really hard time breathing, and we're not 100% sure why. I know, you can't breathe real well. You just stay here in oxygen for a bit, okay? We're gonna get stuff figured out for you. Driving over here, there was a lot of concern. That entire time, I am worried that she could die at any moment. I'm going to be administering the propofol and intubating. She's doing a lot of gasping and she's got her neck extended and that happens when we have an animal who's about to fatigue out from their breathing. So I'd like to actually take control of her airway before she gives up. I'll open and then we're basically just gonna go. Okay, so everyone's ready? Okay. Hi gorgeous, come here. Right now she's suffering. She can't breathe, she has no idea what's going on. So I have to do what we call a rapid sequence intubation, which means I need to make her fall asleep, anesthetize her very, very quickly. You're gonna get real sleepy real fast, it's okay. And put a breathing tube in so that I can protect her airway. I can give her as much oxygen as I need. All right, suction. All right, let's connect to the oxygen, get a few breaths. I know, I know, baby. I'm trying to help you. Okay. Well, we've got her airway, so that is a start. Okay, let's go ahead and get the ECGs hooked up, and now I can finally do an exam. Once I have a patient intubated, I, in essence, have her life, which means I have control over it and gives me time so that I can figure out what the heck is going on uh, because she's a bit of a mystery right now. Oh my God, her lungs sound like garbage. Are you a good boy? On Sydney's outskirts, Emily has brought her adored Remy to Rob, hoping he can fix an eye problem that's plagued the poodle since birth. Oh, baby. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> Remy's had pretty sore eyes from when he was a puppy. He had tear stains from when he was a puppy. We thought maybe it was teething, but they just haven't gone away. We've now worked out that it's to do with his eyelids. Remy, how are you, my darling? Hey, Anne, Hello. how are you? I'm um, good, how are you? Good, how's my little man? Are you well? He's good. His eyes are still a bit sore. They have improved with the medication. The medication has taken away some of that inflammation, of course, and it's controlled the secondary bacterial infection, but you can still see the eyes rolling in, so that presents a, a problem to us. The eyelid's rolling in. It's a condition called entropion. And the worry I have is the eyelid hairs can then scrape on that clear part of your eye and cause an ulcer. He's trying to rub them a little bit. They're quite bad in the morning and after a nap. Yeah, he tries to rub them because yeah. it's like having an eyelash in your eye all the time. Just continually, you know, even trying to close his eyes and blink. My poor boy. No, he's in the light. He's really closing and blinking. Oh, he's closed, totally closed, oh, totally okay. closed. Oh, sweet boy. We're going to have to do something more permanent. Yeah. It's going to be a surgical case. I know that's disappointing, but the good news is that once we do the surgery, it'll go away. Okay. We don't have to keep treating those eyes. We've been trying ointments and various antibiotics as well when it gets a bit infected to keep the inflammation down and try and stop any problems, but what you can't stop is the physical rolling in of the eyes. Do you still love me? Hi, good boy. Hi, good boy. Yeah, happy job. You're gorgeous. <laughs> Remy's crazy. He's super excited, super jumpy, really playful, very loving. He's just really fun and really clever and just like the most beautiful boy and wild. <laughs> Hi, happy boy. You happy boy. Well, he just wants to play with me. I I'm not to do this surgery. Is this is dreadful, Rem. I love you so much. Emily adores this little dog. I've seen it since it was a puppy. She's bonded so strongly, and him with her, they've got a great relationship. Goodbye, little boy. Mummy loves I you. I look after him for you. He's in the best hands. Oh, you're very kind. We'll go this way, darling. Come on, Dubs. Thank you. 
I'll see you later. Come on, baby. Come on. Hi, baby. Oh, that's a pretty pink color. We like that much more than the gray-white of death you were doing before we got your airway gorgeous. In Western Sydney, Mara needs to find out the cause of an acute breathing difficulty that is putting Fetty the cat's life at risk. And let's see how things feel. So, her belly feels okay. I'm not feeling anything really weird there. She's got a big bladder, but she's probably too terrified to urinate. Her heart rate's about 160. Keep suctioning as needed, uh, get a temperature, and I'm gonna do an ultrasound of the chest and the abdomen just to see what is going on. For time to take a look at what hides inside. Point of care ultrasound is when I get an idea as to, do the lungs look healthy? Is there fluid where it shouldn't be? Is everything else looking like it's functioning appropriately or not? I'm also gonna see if I can get a look at the heart just to make sure that there is no fluid built up around the heart or any issues with how the heart is contracting. Our friend is not imaging amazingly, but I'm getting a general idea that the heart looks relatively decent. So right now, I am trying to take a look at the lungs to see are the lungs full of air or fluid. And I can tell you right now, the fact that we're seeing this white out that's just shooting down like a rocket means that we are full of fluid and not air. Betty has a lot of fluid in her airway. There's so much fluid that's actually up in her mouth as well. So we're suctioning and suctioning and suctioning. Just a whiteout, fluid, fluid. And it's fluid in the lungs, not fluid around the lungs. So I'm not dealing with the collapsed lung lobe. I'm dealing with fluid actually building up within the lung itself. I've diagnosed Fetty with non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, basically fluid that has built up in the lungs, not due to heart failure, but due to another issue that has caused that fluid to build up. And that much fluid in the lungs, that's a physical barrier that's preventing oxygen and carbon dioxide from exchanging the way they should. In essence, she's suffocating from that fluid. And if we don't get that fluid out of her lungs, she could die. Let me just have these eyes. In Sydney's West, Rob is about to operate on Remy the Poodle to stop the one-year-old's eyelashes from scratching his eyeballs. Try and flush it if we can. Give that a go. Without surgery to reshape his eyelids, the condition could eventually damage the young dog's sight. My goal in the surgery is to roll the eyelids back down so that they're not literally putting the lashes and the hairs on the eyeball. Okay, that's fine. Thank you. So we're gonna cut a crescent moon shape from all four eyelids both underneath and on top, remove that skin and then suture the eye down so the eye rolls into the right position. It's extremely delicate surgery. One mistake could cost Remy his eyesight. It is amazing how hard you do have to push to get through the skin, but you don't want to cut into the eyeball. Just you don't want to lose the eyeball while you're doing the surgery. So that's the skin from the bottom eyelid. And now we'll sew the two ends together, which pulls that eyelid down into a normal position for us. So now it literally becomes an exercise in suturing because it put a lot of stitches in this eye. as Rob carefully redesigns both eyelids. Okay, one more lid and we're done. He's identified another issue with Remy's eyes that could affect the young poodle's ongoing health. Hmm, it's weird. Don't like that. I'm having trouble finding a tear duct. We're worried about a couple of things now with these eyes, apart from the entropion which is rolling in, we were trying to cannulate the tear duct, and we had trouble with that. 
It is possible Remy has what's called atresia of the ducts, which means they don't have a tear duct. I've literally cannulated thousands of tear ducts and I'm having real trouble and it worries me because if he doesn't have tear ducts, he'll have to live with the tears spilling out the rest of his life. It's another burden on this poor dog's eyes. Okay, Wendy. It's just something that we need to do. In Sydney, Ian has arrived at the small animal specialist hospital, hoping Olivia can fix an ongoing problem with his slippery pet. Wendy's a nine and a half year old Woma python. I've had her seven and a half years. About two years ago, I noticed that Wendy's right eye was bulging. It looked quite painful. So I took it to my local vet and he diagnosed a pretty serious eye problem. Hi Ian, come through. So who do we have here? Uh, doctor, this is Wendy. Wendy. Wendy's a Woma python. Oh. And hello. Wendy has a bit of an eye problem. Oh dear. Wow. All right, shall we get her out? Have a look, hey? Yeah, I mean, I can see what you're talking about there. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? I can see the problem straight away. Wendy has this huge swollen eye on the right side. It's about five times bigger than the one on the left, and it's got this kind of fluid inside it, so it looks really abnormal. So tell me, what's been going on? For the last two years, the local vet's been treating it by cutting a segment out of the spectacle, which covers her eye, and draining mm -hmm. the pressure. Mm -hmm. But each time the wedge that's cut out heals back over and the problem keeps, keeps, coming, keeps back. coming back. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from the eye, how is she in herself otherwise? Is she eating? Yeah, she eats five days ago. She ate a 250 gram frozen wrap. Yep. She's normally in good health. I've always had a fascination for snakes. They make a good pet. And Wendy's a very placid, good-natured snake most of the time. She's been a really good snake for the last seven and a half years. She's only bitten me twice. Looking at her eye, it can be one of two things. Snakes don't have an eyelid. They have the scale over the top of the eye called the spectacle. And what can happen in that space between the eye and the spectacle, we can get fluid build up. And that can either be because we have an abscess in there, like an infection, or because we have a blocked tear duct. In the end, it could be fatal if nothing's done about it because the pressure could build up and build up and build up. And it's been two years now, so I'm sort of looking for a bit more of a permanent solution. I think the best permanent solution for her is actually going to be to remove that eye. Sounds quite radical. She'll be able to live okay with just one eye? Yeah, because they don't use their eyes very sure. much. They've got other sensory organs to navigate their environment sure. and to find their food. Yeah. So they actually cope really well with just the one eye. I really don't think it will impact her quality of life at all. Sure. If we don't do surgery, we're just going to be left with this swollen eye yeah, sure. with all this pressure and this pain and we can't let her live like that. Yeah, no, I agree doctor. I'm happy to go ahead with the surgery for Wendy. I think it's best for her in the long term. I don't want her in any discomfort or pain. Yeah. I realise with any surgery there are risks. So I'm a little bit concerned, I'm a little bit worried, but I don't think it's in a snake's long term interest to be hauled back to the vet two or three times a year and have a traumatic eye operation. Okay Wendy, see you later. Good luck. Thanks, Doctor. You're welcome. I'll, sort you later. I'll chat to you later. Thank All you. Right, bye. Mm, it's weird. Mm. So just to add to our dilemma with these eyes, I can't really see the what's called the puncta, which is the opening of the eyelid. On Sydney's western outskirts, during surgery to stop Remy the Poodle's eyelids from damaging his eyeballs, Rob has discovered the young dog might not have tear ducts. We may end up talking to a specialist. We'll just see what happens post-surgery. Rob completes the life-changing surgery on the eyelids. Beautiful. Okay. Before trying again to find the elusive tear ducts. The eyes straight onto it. It just stops the swelling. I am very happy with the way the surgery has gone. The eyelids look quite good now. But straight after surgery, it looks like he's done a few rounds in the boxing ring. Doesn't look pretty, but this is not done for beauty. This is done for function to get these 
he is out of his eye once and for all. With surgery completed... OK, kill the lights. Rob will perform a test using fluorescent dye to discover if Remy has functional tear ducts. If he doesn't have tear ducts, the tears are spilling out instead of going down the ducts. They can pick up infections from the skin. Just normal bacteria can become opportunistic pathogens and cause infection. That'll be a problem if that's the case. OK, let's see if anything comes out the nose. If all goes really well, it'll come out of his nostril and we'll be able to use the fluorescent light to see it coming out of his nostril. It means the tear ducts open right through and it's working. I can just see a bit. Oh yeah, you can just see on the edge, see? It's starting to come out. You see the fluorescence there? Oh, this is fantastic. You can see it, all the dye coming out. That's telling me that that tear duct is functional. That's excellent. Really good news. It's also fantastic news for Remy's loving owner, Emily, waiting anxiously to see her 13-month-old fur baby. I'm actually feeling a little bit worried to come back and see him, but I knew it was in good hands, so I'm so confident in Dr. Rob. OK, gorgeous. All right, Wendy, we need to give you your sedation now so that we can make you nice and sleepy and ready for your anaesthetic. At SASH in Sydney, Olivia is getting ready to operate on Python Wendy to remove a diseased eye that's caused problems for several years. Oh, good girl, Wendy. The nine-year-old snake is suffering from a suspected blocked tear duct, but Olivia wants to confirm her diagnosis before surgery. Is it alright if we turn the lights off in here for a minute? The eye itself actually looks pretty healthy, but unfortunately the eye also contains a gland which is attached to the tear duct and that's what's causing all this tear blockage in there. So unfortunately I do need to remove the eye and stop that tear production building up. Alright, Wendy, are you feeling sleepy? The difficulty with surgery is that Wendy's eyes are obviously very small, so it's very delicate. It's going to be hard to see those internal structures. Get her like body up a bit more, so it's a bit more like, yeah, like that. That would be awesome. First, Olivia and Nurse Vivian try to insert a catheter, which they'll use to inject a general anaesthetic. Mm -hmm. We might need a second holder, so we just need to hold really tight there. So, we're going to try and put the catheter down here in her tail vein. But finding a vein to insert the catheter into is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Keep holding tension on her body, yeah. I'm trying desperately hard to get this intravenous catheter into the tail vein, but in a sink, you can't actually see any of their blood vessels, so you're going in blind. Yeah, we might need to, to hold her upper body so we can hold her. I can't get the catheter in. Unfortunately, this means that I'm not going to have a direct line into her blood system and it makes me a little bit nervous, but I really need to get this anaesthetic into her, so I'm going to have to just inject straight off the needle. Good girl, Wendy. With Wendy finally asleep, Work on the intricate task of removing her badly swollen eye begins. OK, you ready? Let's get her set up on the ventilator. My biggest worry with this surgery is that artery that connects to the eye, and we need to transect that to remove the eye. However, there can be significant bleeding from that artery, and in a little snake like Wendy, we can't really afford to lose that much blood, so that could be life-threatening for her. So this is as bad as it gets. This cat could die at absolutely any moment. At SASH in Western Sydney, Mara is performing an ultrasound scan to determine why Fetty the cat has a life-threatening amount of fluid in her lungs. So when I'm looking in the abdomen, I'm looking at what I think are intestinal loops, which should be quite small and just have a little bit of fluid in them. 
These are big honking loops, and there's stuff in them. There shouldn't be stuff in them. They shouldn't be this full. So that's really concerning for me, of uh, the potential of there being... <gasps> Suddenly, Mara gets a very unexpected surprise. It's a baby. She's pregnant. Actually? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> She's pregnant. This is a uterus. And we've got a fetus right here, and we can see the bones. And that's the little fetus's heartbeat. I see a flippin' heartbeat. She's not supposed to be pregnant. <laughs> What's going on? Holy mother of, wow. I wasn't expecting that. Given that she's down in the record as being a desexed female. Oh my, yep, there's another one. Another fetus, beating heart, third fetus, beating heart. One, two, three. From what we knew from the Refet records, this cat was supposed to be desexed. I wasn't even thinking babies. <laughs> I was thinking intestines. I was thinking foreign objects. I was thinking other really bad things, not, oh, now there's babies. So we've got one fetus here with the beating heart. And I move the probe over. Here's another fetus with a beating heart. And third beating heart on a third fetus right there. Surprise! <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, this is going to change everything. Now with four lives hanging in the balance, Mara needs to work fast to try to solve the mystery of what's causing Fetty's lungs to fill with fluid. Hi, baby. She's definitely a skinny girl, except for her big old belly. We don't see cats get this type of edema because of pregnancy. That can't be the cause of what is going on with her breathing. It's something different. So why did she go into respiratory distress then? When you're ready, we'll slide her a little bit more this way. In Sydney, Olivia and Nurse Vivian are about to remove the damaged right eye of nine-year-old Python, Wendy. Right, can we get a Doppler just so I can make sure she's got a heart? Yeah. We can't actually listen to a heart of a snake with a stethoscope. You can't hear it through the scales. So we use this machine called a Doppler and we pop it over where the heart is and then we can hear the heartbeat. Perfect. She knows the spot. Okay, I'm happy, we have a heartbeat. All right, so I'm just gonna start by cutting the spectacles, that scale over the eye. Probably be a bit of fluid that will come out from this. I've just removed the spectacle. So that was what was covering over the eye and all that fluid that was blocked in there has come out now as well. So now I'm at the actual eye and the next step is to remove that eye. Just trying to release some of these muscle attachments from the eye. So we're encountering a little bit of bleeding, so I'm just trying to control that. The blood that we are losing from the eye would be pretty insignificant in another animal, but in a small snake like Wendy, even a few drops could be life-threatening for her. So we really need to try and control the bleeding as much as possible. It's bleeding quite a lot, which has got me a bit worried at the moment. As I'm going along, I'm also using pressure with my cotton tips to try and stop that bleeding and minimise that blood loss as much as possible so that I can get this eye out safely. So I'm just trying to carefully go along this is the most dangerous part when we get down to those internal structures, the optic artery and things like that, where we can get a lot of bleeding. Bleeding from the optic artery can be really serious and can even be fatal in snakes. Olivia has yet to reach the optic artery, but already the blood loss is at a worrying level. Just getting quite a bit of bleeding, so we're just putting a sponge in that's going to soak up some of that blood and clot that blood. Oh Holy mother of wow. I wasn't expecting that. 
In Sydney's West, Mara and her team have made the surprise discovery that Fetty the cat is carrying triplets. Surprise! <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, this is going to change everything. I think we're definitely going to have to do some x-rays of her. And we go like the wind. We're going to take some x-rays next both of the chest and the abdomen so that I can see if there's anything glaringly obvious for why this has happened. Why don't we do a little bit of ISO going, please? Oftentimes we do x-ray and ultrasound because the two together get us more information. X-ray, we look at a single snapshot that can look deep in the body. Just hold your breath, you'll be fine. Mara hopes the lung x-rays will reveal better news than the massive fluid buildup shown in the ultrasound images. Wow, Fatty's lungs are not very happy looking. These should be black, and it's really not. So that means that the lung is full of fluid and or pus and or something else, but given what we are getting up out of the airway when we're suctioning, it's not good. Her lungs look awful, absolutely awful. So these x-rays support what I found on ultrasound and that she is at a very high risk of dying at any moment. Most commonly, we see animals develop this type of edema because they've choked on something or they've been electrocuted. But until she can talk and tell us what the heck happened, all we can do is guess. All right, my friend. Fetty is moved onto a mechanical ventilator that will breathe for her and hopefully keep her alive until she can start breathing by herself. The pressure we have to use of air in the lungs to push the oxygen into her body can be so high that it can actually damage the lungs. The lungs can, in essence, pop and leak. Whenever I'm putting a patient on the ventilator, I know that that very early point, the first few minutes to first hour, are the most critical because we're making such massive changes to how the body is working. All right, Fetty. We will have to give you the night and see what happens, huh? We can very easily have a patient that we're trying to save tip over and die. It's a pretty anxious time. So hopefully, we'll get through this. As Fetty's life hangs by a thread, you be good, all right, Mama? It also rings alarm bells for the three tiny fetuses inside her. I don't know if the kittens are going to make it because their heart rates, when I looked at them on ultrasound, were not very fast, which means that they're in severe distress. She may end up basically aborting the kittens because if she can't get through this, they sure can't get through this. Oh, baby. kind of hard to see all the individual structures. At SASH in Sydney, Olivia is concerned about blood loss as she operates to remove the diseased eye of Snake Wendy. Okay, so the eye is starting to loosen up, so I'm getting closer and closer to where I'm going to need to cut, and this is the part that I'm going to be worried about, a lot of bleeding. This is the most important part of the entire surgery. So I've done everything else I need to do now. I just need to get the eye out, but that means I need to cut the optic artery. That's where we could have really significant blood loss and that could be the point where she could even die if she loses too much blood. Viv, we're gonna need to flush this socket as well. Getting the eye out now and luckily not having any bleeding so far, so I'm really happy with that. Looks great, so I'm very happy. All the eye and all the tissue is out. So I think now we can put some antibiotic gel in, give it a flush and close her up. Great. But the good news is short lived. Viv, mm. it sounds like her heart is slowing down. Yep, I'm just counting it now. So I'm at the point where we're going to stitch up now. 
However, as I'm about to do that, her heart rate starts to drop. And this has got me really worried because I'm worried that her anesthetic is too deep. And if her heart rate drops too low, then it could stop altogether. Can we put it down to 0.75? How are you, my darling? In Sydney's West, Rob is about to reunite Remy with his adoring but worried owner Emily after surgery on the young poodle's eyes. Come on, darling. Your mother's. Oh. Here he is. <laughs> so it looks like he lost in a boxing match. <laughs> You're okay. Are you very happy? You're so very sick. close to it. I know, it's heartbreaking. You're allowed to cry in this room. Oh. Nothing wrong with loving your dogs. This is where I picked him up. Oh no. My sweet boy. I know that Remy has meant a lot to Emily. They've been through a lot together. And it's just beautiful to see them happy again. And once I take all the stitches out in a few weeks' time, I know he'll have a fantastic life with her. Oh, sweet boy. Mummy loves you. He will be fine given time. He's a strong boy. You have he's to he's going hands. well. We'll just keep him on his antibiotics, rest him. There's some ointment as well. And hopefully that's it. No more trouble with those eyes. Thank you so but much. Be okay. Oh, pleasure. I did not realise that he was going to look like this when I picked him up. My heart's broken for him, little boy, but I just know he'll be better in no time. Just give him some extra love for the next little while, I think. Thank you, Rob. Pleasure. All the best. Thank you. I'm here anytime you need me, okay? In the meantime, he can go home. Thank you for doing a great job. Let's go. Sounds like her heart is slowing down. Yep, I'm just counting it now. Yeah. Some... Maybe we can reduce her depth a bit because we are yep. getting close to closing. In Sydney, Snake Wendy's heart rate has dropped alarmingly, just as Olivia and nurse Vivian finish surgery to remove the python's right eye. Probably even go down to one at this point. That heart sounds like it's getting a bit stronger. It's good. So it's gone down quite quickly. Lowering the anaesthetic level thankfully has stabilised Wendy's heart rate. Her heart rate's going back up again, so I'm feeling really positive and really happy. Now I just need to get her closed up. All right, so this is the final step. We just got to get this skin closed. But as Olivia sews up the wound, she faces a new challenge. I'm not 100% sure if I'm going to be able to keep this closed without having too much tension on the scales, but we'll certainly try. Unlike mammals, where there's a lot of loose skin to play with and you can easily stitch it up, reptiles have very thick scales and so they don't really have a lot of give in that skin. So I am a bit concerned that we might not be able to close this wound fully. We may need to leave it partially open to heal as an open wound. Okay, not long to go now, Wendy. This will be the final step to see if we can keep it nice and sealed for her. Yeah, it's coming together quite nicely, which is good. I'm happy so far. Should be the last stitch, I hope. Okay. Everything's gone really well with surgery. I'm really happy. I've managed to actually close the skin over the eye. Now we just need her to wake up from the anaesthetic. You gonna wake up, Wendy? What do you think? Time to wake up now? Just gonna pull that out gently. I know, good girl. Oh. I'm sorry. Okay. Hello. Hi, Wendy. You 
wake up quickly. So there were a lot of complications that could happen with this surgery. We were worried about bleeding. We were worried that we wouldn't be able to close the wound, but fortunately it's all gone really well. This has been a really positive outcome. I'm really, really happy with how surgery's gone today. All right, let's go and take you through, okay? It could take quite a while for Wendy to be awake enough to go home. So for now, I've put her in a nice warm hospital cage. I'll let Ian know that she's doing well and he'll come and pick her up when she's more awake. Oh, good girl, Wendy. Such a brave girl. At Sash in Sydney, Fetty bravely fought the severe respiratory illness that was placing her life at risk. Sadly, her lungs were too badly damaged and the expectant mother died 48 hours after coming to Sash, losing her three unborn kittens as well. Hey, Tessie. Six weeks after surgery to stop his eyelashes from rubbing on his eyeballs, God. Remy the Poodle is even more playful than before his operation. Wee oui, wee, oui. wee oui, wee. Oui. Oh, you're a good boy. With no more irritations or infections in his eyes, the lively one-year-old is a new dog and is even more focused on his devoted owner, Emily. Six weeks after surgery to remove her right eye, Wendy the Python has recovered brilliantly and is back to her normal self. If she remains in good health, her devoted owner Ian expects the active nine-year-old to live to the ripe old snake age of 20, or even longer. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.